Beloved, welcome back to the shop. If you've been living in a cave, perhaps you haven't noticed that America is rushing headlong into the great struggle, i.e. the Depression 2.0. Now, I was pro good portion of my childhood was being raised by my Depression era grandfather, and he did everything. The family did everything. They sewed their own clothes, grew their own food, built their own houses. All of these tremendous skills that were just commonplace among men, well, the boomers did not pass them on, and so a lot of us are gonna be caught on the back foot. These skills carried those men and women through a very difficult time that you have no idea unless you've actually been uh, studied it and talked to people that have went through it. It was a great, great burden, and I think that we're facing the same thing today. It's gonna to be much worse for us, beloved, because we don't possess the basic skills that those men and women needed or had to do, had to be able to do to get through life, because why? They didn't have any money. You couldn't hire people to do all the things that we have enjoyed in the past. So in today's video, we're gonna be kicking off some of those traditional skills. I'm gonna be teaching myself how to sew. I put together a basic sewing kit. I was gonna buy a machine and I thought, no, I'm gonna to learn to do it by hand. And then if I can kind of master that, or at least become proficient, then I'll move into a machine. Before we get started, I'll show you my sewing kit. I just started getting everything together and there's some, some basic things that a guy's gonna to wanna to have. And I, Mrs. W had all the sewing stuff. She actually is pretty decent at that, has a sewing machine, but her stuff, well, I'm very particular about my tools and I'm not really, I, I'm not content with sewing with Ikea scissors. And so I went out and got some nicer things because this is something that I'm very interested in and I wanna be able to alter and change my own clothing and do repairs. So this is all Japanese, mostly this is Japanese stuff. Kai shizzer, it scissors. These are specific tailor scissors or seamstress scissors. I got a thread ripper. <clears throat> I got some pins. I got a fabric marking pencil. I got uh, these little clippers and all this stuff. My grandmother was a seamstress. I remember all this stuff. I got a couple different various threads. I got a thimble because I'm going to be pushing through some pretty thick denim. And what else did I get? I got a tape <clears throat> for measuring. I couldn't resist. I got a pin cushion. <laughs> This is the exact one that my grandmother had. I th when I was a kid, I thought this was the coolest thing, and I saw it. It was 79 cents. I'm like, I'll have it. I'll have it in memory of Grams or Nana. And I got some really proper German needles and then uh, a measuring tape. <clears throat> or That's from my toolbox and some clips uh, that may or may not work. But this is where I'm starting. This is basically all you need, which is kind of nice because it's not a ton of stuff, really. Again, I have never done this before. I watch some YouTube videos. It's, it's, gonna, be, it's gonna be what it is. I, I don't know how it's gonna work out. But I do know that these, this is also a set of Buzz Ricks and Pants. This is a reproduction of an outer pant that I really, really like. It's my favorite set and I love the length. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna match these up because the rise is pretty similar. And we're gonna use this as a template to kind of start off what we want our length to be. The khakis come unwashed, so there is quite a bit of shrink in them. The, it, the material is raw, so these will shrink about an inch in the waist and about an inch and a half or so in the length. This is the perfect length where I want it now, so I'm gonna go, go down here and I'm gonna mark this out. We're gonna go inch and a half. I got a special pencil here for marking fabric. When you wash it, the, these marks will go out, and then we can put a pin in here and that will be the bottom of my hem. Now we can take a look at the factory hem and we're gonna want to reproduce this. I like the size of it. So what do we have here? So this is, and it's probably the metric system. We're gonna say an inch and a half. That's pretty good size. This one here, well, they're about the same, an inch and a half or so. So we'll maintain that. And this obviously was done with the machine. We're gonna do this by hand. It looks to me, there's such a nice edge on there, they must have rolled that over there and then back on itself. I don't know for sure. Since we're gonna cut all this off, let's uh, reconstruct this. This is a, um, a seam ripper. If we reconstruct, we can take this apart, we can kind of see what they did and try to repeat it. This is my first time ever using a seam ripper and that is a tool that works really good. Okay, 
Now we've deconstructed this so we can see exactly what they did here. So what they did is this was the original hem, is that they had that inch and a quarter fold over, and then they had a little bit of extra where that folds back inside as well, and that's where the stitching goes through, right through the top, and that way you have a nice clean edge on the top that won't fray. So it seems to me that we'll just do the same thing. So all we need to do, and now we know where we, where we want our hem to be, which is that pin, and if we measure from the seam to our first cut. All right, gentlemen, we've reached the point of no return. I think it's time to cut. Now, is it best to cut them at the same time? I don't know. Probably not, probably cut them single. So I readjusted my line a little bit. It was a little bit off, but I guess we just go for it. First time using the new series. These are the Kai 8 inch in the 7000 series. They had a, they had some about 20 bucks cheaper that were the 5000 series. I've never regretted buying good tools. I figured, well, we'll get, might as well get the good ones. Boy, they are delightful scissors though. Excellent. With the extra cut off, we are ready to turn them inside out and start folding our cuff over and pin it up and then get ready for the stitching. With the khakis turned inside out, now we'll do our first fold. I didn't buy one of these, but I saw it in Mrs. W's sewing kit. I found it to be very useful for doing these hems. These pins I bought uh, have glass heads on them. I didn't know there was such a thing and I was looking stuff, but the reason why they have glass instead of uh, plastic is you can iron over top of them and they won't melt and ruin the fabric, which I thought was pretty clever. We have one more fold to make and we'll match up the existing here. Mama, go on, get off my trousers. There's one last thing we need to do before we start sewing. I'm here at these seams. We need to, we've got a lot of, quite a bit of bulk because we've got so many layers here. So on the first fold, we're gonna carefully cut out. Now that's gonna sit a lot flatter on there.
Everything looks pretty good. It's matched. It's where I want it. I guess we're ready to turn them inside out and get ready to start sewing. And if we double check my pants here with the perfect length. Yep, we have about an inch, inch and a half longer than what I want them to be, which they should shrink up to. So that's perfect right there. I think that'll be just exactly what I like. This is my first fire of the fall. Fall feels like it's here. It's getting down into the 30s at night and the leaves are starting to change. Felt like summer just got here and now it's getting cold. Let's see if we can turn these back inside out without putting a pin through my finger. Since we're going to hand stitch and match up what we had here, which is about an inch and a half seam, it seems to me that it would make it be a good idea uh, to put some marks on here so we can follow them. It's going to be very difficult to get that straight by just eyeballing it. It's time to pick our thread color. I only have two threads. <laughs> I was, actually, this is a thread for jeans. It's that golden color. I was gonna hem jeans first, but I got these and I thought, well, these are half the price of the jeans, so I think maybe I'll practice on this. Uh, so I'm gonna use the gold. I, I don't mind. I don't mind a little contrasting color. I think it'll actually look kind of cool. So we'll go with this. I even, I got a, um, I read that guys were saying you really need to get a, a thimble to push the needle through. Maybe not so much on this lighter weight stuff, but when you get into like the 21 ounce Selvedge denim. It's really difficult because you're pushing through three layers. And so I got, so we'll try this out here. But I thought that the leather one seemed a little bit cooler or just more usable than the, the old ones or the metal style. I got some really nice needles. This is a number five, I believe. So I guess We'll just have to figure out how to do a back stitch. That's what I was told or what I saw in the video that we'll use. And uh, well, I can just start doing it, I guess. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. But all things are possible with God. I guess that means including dragging a camel through the eye of a needle. We'll start right here at the side seam. All right, gentlemen, time to show my work. This is the first time I've ever done this, but it actually went pretty well. I tried two different stitches. The first one I did, I, I did stitches that were really tight, really small. It took a long, long time. Here's the inside. Definitely homemade looking, but I think it looks good. I don't mind that at all. And the second one, I tried a little bit wider stitch. I'm just kind of playing around here. So these, uh, these are about twice as wide. Looks a little bit different. Looks okay though. Maybe something right in the, in the middle would probably be better. And I, I think I got a little bit better. Definitely was improving towards the second one. 
especially on the inside. That looks pretty decent. I used a, a back stitch. That's what most people seem to recommend online. But that's it. That's my first pair. That's quite an accomplishment for me. I've never done that before. And to do it properly like that is nice. Nice to know that. It's actually quite enjoyable. All right, let's try them on and uh, see if I got it right. Mm -hmm.